Hello guys, welcome back. I hope you are doing great. Let's go through Scikit LLM in this video. I hope you know what is large language model in short LLM. And if you don't know what is Scikit Learn, it is a Python package for machine learning. I hope if you are doing some data science or machine learning, then you know what is this package. But you don't need to know what it is right now, but just to let you know that it is used in machine learning. Right, so this is the combination of these two things, Scikit LLM. It says here, Scikit LLM, SK Learn meets large language models, right? What we can do is seamlessly integrate, as it is mentioned here, powerful language models like ChatGPT into Scikit Learn for enhanced text analysis task. So what I will be doing in this video is first explain you what is Scikit LLM with this diagram and then I will show you in the notebook in the demo part some of the examples using the scikit LLM as well as using the scikit LLM within a scikit loan pipeline so yeah that's all we will be covering in this video let's get started I am currently on the github repository of the scikit LLM instead of going through this readme file what I have done is created a diagram for you here we will go through step by step what are the different things that is being provided by scikit LLM. So in the beginning, it covers two different models mainly that is OpenAI and the GPT for all. And they have also now started supporting Azure OpenAI because these are similar to each other. So you can install pip install scikit LLM and it works for both of these. But if you want to go with the GPT for all, you need to install differently. So you need to provide pip install scikit LLM GPT for all. I will show you in the notebook section. If you go a little bit ahead, there are different estimators being used for OpenAI or Azure OpenAI and for GPT for all. As you can see here, there are only three of the estimators, only zero shot GPT classifier and multi-level zero shot classifier and few zero shot classifier available as of today. And there are many others that are available for OpenAI models. As the name suggests, they can be used to solve different problems, right? So as you can see here, it says zero shot GPT classifier that is used for zero shot text classification task and similar to all the other things. And as, as the name suggests, as I said you before, you can go through this in depth by pausing the video or going through the uh, readme file as I showed you before. But one thing that you need to be careful here is GPT for all model, like all, not all the models are commercially licensable. So you need to be careful when using the models in the production. And the next thing is the accuracy of the models may not be much more, it's, it's not that better compared to the open AIs. And then not all the available models were tested. Some may not work with the Scikit LLM at all, right? By the way, if you want to know what are the different models available for GPT for all, you can go to the GPT for all website. Almost at the end, there is this model explorer section. Here you can go and choose one of the model that you want to use. And then you can download this model and use this in the project. But one of the model is already available for us. So when we start using it, it will be downloaded automatically for us. Now let's go and see the notebook part. I am now on the Google Colab. I will provide this notebook in the description of this video. You can follow along with me. So the first question might be why this library, right? This is, as I said before, seamlessly integrate powerful LLMs. And the next thing is it is similar as scikit Learn there is this feed, feed transform and the predict also available in the scikit LLM. And also the estimators can be combined from the scikit LLM library in a scale pipeline. So the set of things first, you need to install the necessary package, right? Or you can just install scikit LLM and you need to have the open AI API keys. And one thing here is that you also need to have the OpenAI organization ID. You can just click the links here. It will take you to the right place. If you don't have the account already, please create the account and replace the your API key and the open API organization ID in this particular place here. 
and when you run this particular shell you are good to go so now first let's go and see the open ai support for this particular scikit llm let's go and see the zero short text classification right so what is zero one of the powerful chat gpt feature is the ability to perform the text classification without being retrained right you don't need to retrain so all it requires is just the descriptive levels right so the zero short gpt classifier allows to create such a model as a regular scikit learn classifier so how does it works so from the SKLLM, I'm importing the zero short GPT classifier and the data set is also being used from the SKLLM. So I'm taking this gate classification data set. So here X and Y, I can just provide the gate classification data set. So there are 30 different examples. This is X. And then if you go down here, this is the Y and that is X and Y. But to notice here is that indexing starts at zero in the Python, right? So what I'm doing here is taking the three different subsets of the data, right? I'm just writing a function here and it takes the three different subset and I'm combining that uh, data at the last because what uh, why I'm doing this is to just get the labels with the training data set, right? So here is the train data set and I'm providing the train data set X so X train is 24. Why I'm doing here, as you can see here, there is data is eight, right? And I'm taking eight elements here and eight elements and eight elements, meaning that I'm leaving six elements for testing data set. So here is the training data and here is the testing data, right? So there are the 24 of this. And as you can see here, there are 24 of these also here and the test data set are six of those. So that is how I have, I have differentiated between the training and the test data set. So what we can do next is just defining the OpenAI model to use, right? So we have the zero short GPT classifier and we are using GPT 3.5 Turbo in this case. And then we can just pass normally. The CLF is the zero short GPT classifier and we just say dot fit and we pass the X train and Y train. So that's all we need to do. And there is this predicting the data now because we trained it here, but we need to predict, right? For predicting, we can just use the model that is being trained and dot predict, we can just pass the testing data here. So now, as you can see here, once that is predicted, what we can see here is this is the example that is being provided and that is positive, that is positive that is negative, negative, neutral and neutral, right? But we need to know how well it did the score, right? So here I am just importing the accuracy score from the SKLON dot matrix. So this is how we can integrate between the SKLON and SKLLM. So here I'm just saying the accuracy score and I'm just passing the white test and the predicted labels, right? So where, where does this predicted labels come from? So as you can see here, I'm naming these the predicted labels. So when I pass this here, it provides me the accuracy of one, meaning that all the six test data sets are correctly uh, classified using this zero short, what, what do we use it here? We use zero short GPT classifier. Right. So yeah, this is how, how it works. We just provided some example in the training and then we just use that to uh, predict if this is positive or negative or neutral sentiment analysis, right? So the next thing what we can do is training without the label. That is when things get interesting, right? So let's say that you don't have the labeled data set, right? So for that, what you can do is defining the model. We can use the zero short GPT classifier, the same model, right? And no training, so passing the labels only for the prediction, right? So here we are just saying that, okay, we just have three different labels, but we are not passing any training data here. And we are predicting directly using that particular model. So here, as you can see here, we says predicted labels without training data. And we just said CLF no label. So here is the no label. And then we are just passing the X test. 
and then this is the prediction and when we did these things it is shown here positive positive negative negative neutral neutral and then when we did this accuracy score it shows one so this is how it works you can even provide without the training data meaning that without training you pass the model using SKLLM and did some prediction out of it so now you can even go further and do the multi-level zero short text classification I'm not going to go through that but if you have multiple level right then you can use the multi-level zero short text classification but what I'm going to do here is the text vectorizer so or the scikit LLM provides GPT vectorizer class to convert the input text into the fixed dimensional vector representation so what it is using behind the scene is open AI embedding model that is like text embedding other 002 right if we just open this here so what I am showing you here is from SKLLM pre-processing you can import the GPT vectorizer and you can say okay I have some of the data here and then I want these to be converted into numbers right so you can just use the vectorizer as GPT vectorizer and then you can fit the, the, the data that you just provided here and it provides you the vector and you can see that just to provide that it is using the OpenAI's model embedding model it has the 1536 embedding dimensions right so yeah this was okay that we have we can use the GPT vectorizer right but what if we can use the, the same GPT vectorizer in the SK loan or the scikit loan uh, pipeline right that is what I will be showing you in the next part here let's use the scikit LLM within a scikit loan pipeline right these are all the things that I'm importing from SKLON pipeline I am taking the pipeline and these are SKLON pre-processing I am taking the label encoder and from SK, SKLLM pre-processing I am taking the GPT vectorizer as I was doing just before here right and then from XGBoost I am importing the XGB classifier so as you can see here I am first doing the encoding part so LE I am saying that okay this is label encoder and then the Y train encoded I am fitting the Y train into the encoding part and the Y test I am also doing the encoding by the way I am using the same data that I have used before so Y train encoded it is encoded in this way and the Y test encoded is encoded in, in this format it is showing here 0 1 2 because we have three different levels right positive negative and neutral this is how it is being shown here now we can just create a pipeline there is steps first we need to do the GPT vectorizer and then next we will be using the classifier so we can just mention that in the steps and we can pass that steps into the pipeline so that is how the pipeline works one step after the another this is similar to chaining in LangChain if you remember we can pass different things in the in the chain right now we can just say the classifier CLF the dot feet and we can pass the X train Y train encoded you need to remember here we are passing the encoded here and yeah this is how it is shown here the pipeline first it will do the GPT vectorizer you can even scroll this it uses the GPT vectorizer right and then there is this XG boost so you can see all the default parameters that is being used here if you want to change this you can of course do it if you want but I'm not going to go through that here and then I will just do the prediction as I did before so I'm just using X test to predict right Y pred encoded is CLF predict and then I'm just saying that X test here right as you can see here now I can reboard the encoded labels into the actual labels so we first encode it right that means that it is 0 1 2 but we need to know that this is positive negative or neutral right so this is how we can do the inverse transform of the y pred in encoded and now i'm just doing some printings here now as you can see here the encoded labels train set is this right and the actual labels are this one as you can see here 
and the predicted levels is this as you can see here so now what is the evaluation we did so as you can see here one was positive it it says neutral positive positive negative 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 positive neutral 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 meaning that two of those are not correct here right so if we just want to have the accuracy we can just provide y test and the y bread that we did just before and we get the accuracy and it is 0 0.67 so yeah this is how quickly you can use the gpt vectorizer from s scikit llm into the sk learn pipeline so next i will show you how you can use the gpt for all model similar how we did for the open ai models so for gpt for all also i am going to use the same data with one of the model from gpt for all so when running the first time the model will be downloaded automatically it needs to restart the run time right because what i noticed is if you if you install this here this is how you can install the gpt for all scikit llm but you need to restart the run time and what i will be doing here is now just using the from sk llm config we can import the sk llm config as we did before and the good part here is you can just pass anything here but one thing here it was quite confusing in the beginning and you can you need to still say set open ai key but you can pass whatever you want here i am saying any string you can also pass any string because we don't need to provide the actual open ai api key because we don't have because we are using gpt for all now right so from sk llm we can import the zero sort gpt classifier that we did before and then here i'm using clf gpt for all and zero short gpt classifier and open ai model this is how you need to provide but you can provide the model that you want to use so this is what i am i'm using here but you can just go to this gpt for all website as i said before and choose the model that best fits your use case so now let me go back to the notebook so yeah that's all and the other things are the same so clf the gpt for all feet you can just pass the x train y train and then you can do the prediction yeah for the first time as i said before it is taking some time for downloading the model right so as you can see here it is downloading because the model is 3.79 gb and it is taking some time to download and then the prediction is happening here so here is the prediction the evaluation part so there it is predicting four of those are correct and two of those are not correct meaning that the accuracy is 0 0.67 right so now similar to what we did before we can also perform this for if we don't have any levels for the data right so this is the same as we did before and you can provide the model name here and just provide the levels that you have for your particular data and it is doing the prediction just to show you that it is taking as so much time here as you can see it taking 40 minutes plus time to just do the prediction for six different data sets so it's up to you if you want to use it or not but this is how long it will take with the gpt for all model while it was just taking seconds for the open ai model so yeah and then the same thing you can do the evaluation and this is also the same here 0 0.67 is the accuracy so yeah that's all for this video i hope you learned something new today if you are new in this channel i will be creating more videos in the future so please subscribe if you haven't already and yeah that's all thank you for watching and see you in the next video